All right, everyone, we are here with War 12, and it is a rematch against GT40. It's very frustrating that out of 20 Master Alliances that we usually rematch one that we did in the first week of the season. So here we are. I got Path 7 in Section 1. I have a middle mini boss. I have Path 4 in Section 2, and I have a mini boss on Boss Island. Um, so this first fight, Tigra on uh, Kinetic Transference, but also has... The uh, power drain abilities are 90% less effective. What I will be taking this with is Doom, and Doom does not power drain, he powers steals. So that is one way to bypass this node. Um, Doom is still going to power drain the same amount and gain the same amount of power that he would in a normal fight off of this node. Um, now I still do have weakness active, even though I did not bring Mr. Negative to war. Um, so that's another benefit of me taking this is that the weakness is going to sometimes turn off her unblockable. So you're going to see me here just attack, basically push her past two bars of power, get to my one bar of power, throw SP1 to power drainer, and then hopefully get to an SP3 while the aura is up <clears throat> and hitting her with every light attack that I have. Um, you're going to notice I'm not heavy heavying at the end of the combo i'd rather have more light attacks uh than place a stagger yeah the stagger will remove the unblockable but so will the uh weakness and i'm not too concerned about getting smacked with an unblockable special by her um, so here we are in a good spot to sp3 and this is going to do enough damage that the first one to two hits after the sp3 are just going to knock her out with the fury so boom down she goes nice and easy fight next fight uh is thing and i'm just gonna quake and shake him it's been a while since i brought quake to war this is a really boring fight um if we wanted to be creative and not bring quake to war you could use a rank three falcon here and he'd shut off the hazard shift and between locked on uh phases or triggers uh you could hit into his block to buy time before lockdown comes back on but we just went ahead and with went with quake and this is the only quake fight i have this war it should be one maybe two more aftershocks depending on how aggressive he is there it is so easy section one Next up is Mangog on Mixmaster. I'm gonna be taking this with Human Torch and with the Nova pre-fight. My game plan here is the Parry Medium Light. And I start off with Parry Medium Light Medium, but then you'll see I switch to Medium Light um, just so that I end every combo with a different hit than I start the next one so that he doesn't evade after he either throws a special or a heavy and I try and, ret try and retaliate. So we're just building Nova Flames, blocking some of his SP1 while the prowess is low. There's the evade, so now I'm gonna switch to medium light. Um, and you can kind of push him to SP2 or try as hard as you want. You don't really have to bait SP1 as long as you're keeping the prowess low. SP1 is gonna give him a bunch of hatred and he'll eventually go unstoppable. Um, so you're saving the special attacks for when he does. Um, and I took a heavy there, I was not prepared for him to immediately throw it. But anyways, um, fight's going pretty smooth. Medium light, medium light, medium light. Gonna see if he throws his SB1, he's not really wanting to. And he threw the SB2 there and died from the power sting. So, turned out to be a pretty easy mini boss. Alright, so moving on to path 4 in section 2. Taking this strife with Human Torch without the pre-fight. Shouldn't be too hard of a fight. Uh, his, some of his basic attacks build uh, Human Torch's temperature so we can avoid miss, but we're also gonna go ahead and block the big ball from his SB1 so that we can build temperature as well. Um, game plan here is just to parry medium, light medium, save the special attacks, um, bait out his SB1 constantly, and we're not gonna worry about unblockable unless we get hit, because um, it's only two buffs, two debuffs instead of three 
when he uses a special attack. So nothing here. You'll see that my temper temperature stayed pretty low at the start of the fight. He gets almost, I want to say, 40% gone before I realize that I'm not really building a good temperature. So I start blocking combos instead of parrying so that I can bypass some mists after SP1. Um, so I'm taking a decent amount of block damage, but it's nothing, it's not a big deal. So we could hit him there, I decided not to. And here comes an SP3 as soon as his health gets a little bit lower after he gets this SP1 out. So pretty simple fight, nothing really complicated about this, not really sure about this placement. And down he goes. All right, moving on. The second note is Terax. Now I have Doom for Terax. Yes, Doom doesn't have too many benefits against Terax as far as, you know, shock, heavy, he doesn't have a lot of buffs. So really the benefit of bringing Doom here is that Doom has great damage and that Doom can't be armor broken. So we're not gonna worry about Terax going unblockable on this node due to the constant armor breaks. And I didn't see that heavy come. Due to the constant armor breaks uh, from his uh, rock field. So all you're gonna see me do is combo into Terax. When his rock field is up, I'm actually gonna parry heavy just to space it out. And when I get to SP2, that's when I'm throwing my special and just letting the incinerates do their work. And that's all it really is. You're going to see the damage I take is mostly from Rockfield. Um, you are going to see me retaliate his SP1 with a heavy. And again, it's just to create space to let his Rockfield die off over time. He's being real stubborn about this one. Finally throws it, retaliate heavy, and now parry heavy until we get to SB2. And we use it. So pretty straightforward fight, as long as you remember that Terax is shock immune, so you don't try a shock heavy. <laughs> um, so easy, easy path fights. Moving on, I was not originally assigned this guardian but I went ahead and took it anyways so that we could clear tonight. Um, this is a really easy fight. So even though Guardian has a great deal of energy resistance, placing an incinerate here weakens him significantly um, from the node buffs. It allows us to stun. It allows stun vulnerability to um, become active and the incinerates add extra attack. So. I think maybe the game plan for this placement was for me to get stuck in Nova the entire fight. Um, but what you're going to see is that I don't actually build enough smolder charges to get stuck in Nova for the entirety of the fight. Um, Guardian's just going to die too quick from combos. Um, and you'll see game plan was beta heavy when stun reflect was up. Incinerate him. Then go to parry, medium, light, medium, and then just pay attention to the stun reflect timer and either lengthen my combo or get ready to place an incinerate. So it was a super easy fight. We ended up getting another donut for this war. So did they, so BG2 did their job. However, both alliances died two times and therefore we lost by the tiebreaker time. Um, it's a tough way to lose. Uh, it would drive officers crazy to kind of plan a war to make sure that time is down in case something like a two death war happens. I don't know. In my opinion, if, if we're sub three deaths every war consistently, then we're doing our job and it's just unfortunate to lose off of time. Um, and uh, this is the first season with time showing. So to get a feel for what is realistic as far as a low time score, is, is just really, really hard to tell. Um, really, really hard to tell. So 
it, it's kind of sour, kind of not. It sucks. End of season. Would have liked to win to maybe keep the fourth place spot in case anything happens. Um, don't know if we're going to keep it. We might move to fifth. Uh, so kind of a heartbreaking loss, but it is what it is. Um, thanks for stopping by. Keep your eyes out for the season uh, reward video.